So what's on tap for today, folks? It's my reaction video to Attorney General Merrick Garland being grilled and questioned by Josh Hawley over the DOG memo that basically likened parents to domestic terrorists. So let's get right into it. But if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. You're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show, our reaction video. And hit that um, notification bell, like and share and follow us. You know what to do. That's what's on tap for today. Let's get right into the video. Accommodation with respect to the constitutional protection is one that directs a threat to a person with the intent of placing the victim in fear of bodily harm or death. Prosecutors who investigate these cases know the Supreme Courts. This is a, a, a very famous uh, leading case. Pro prosecutors do, but but parents don't, General Garland. Do you, do you think that a... That's right. Parents, We what, what is this thing here? Of course everybody knows that threats of violence or actual violence being committed or anything else, okay, that's going to place somebody... Uh, safety in harm's way or in jeopardy, whether they're an elected official or non-elected official, a regular citizen of the country. We, there are laws already there. You don't need to compound those laws by basically saying, hey, parents, guess what? If you start putting stuff on Facebook, um, just not, not, not threats, not anything like that, just regular messages that, you know, you're upset about something, that's not supposed to be uh, policed. Only when it rises to the level of inciting some type of violence or that you're going to do something, you know, terrible or those kind of things. And, and th this is unbelievable, this memo that came by from here. So let's hear what Senator Hawley has to say uh, in response to Merrick. A parent who looks at the 13 different federal crimes that your Justice Department has identified they might be subject to and probably... 13 crimes that parents could be subjected to? 13 crimes? This is insane. Prosecuted for, like making annoying phone calls. Do you think that they're going to feel that they're welcome to speak up at a school board meeting? How about this one? They could be prosecuted for using the internet, I guess that would be Facebook, in a way that might cause emotional distress to a victim. Is that a, is that a crime of violence? Senator, I haven't seen the memo that you're well, talking about. Why haven't you? And I don't... I, and I, I, you're in charge of the freaking, you're the attorney general. You're in charge of the entire Justice Department. What do you mean you haven't, you've seen the memo. One thing is, take a look here as we go through. Watch how many times this guy's eyes blink as he's answering the questions. They always say that when your eyes are blinking really fast, you're trying to think really quick as to what to say to obfuscate any answers that you could give that might be truthful. Even from the description, it doesn't sound like it was addressed to parents. But if you no, it wasn't addressed to parents. It was addressed to prosecutors. That's the yeah. problem. Why haven't you seen the memo? I, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't look at every. I have. I do not get every memo that every U.S. attorney uh, sends out. But uh, if you're wait, 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 wait. Don't, don't. I, I just want to be sure I understand this. This, this is a memorandum that collects 13 different federal crimes parents could be charged with. It has United States. Department of Justice on the top of it, and you're telling me you haven't seen it? Who's the memo from, Senator? Liar. He's a big, fat liar is what he is. Has not seen the memo. The United States Department of Justice, United States Attorney for the District of Montana. I have not seen a memo from the District of Montana. I not high enough priority for you? It's not. That's oh. not the question. I don't... It is the question. question. Answer my question. Is it not... A that is the question. Answer the darn question for crying out loud, Attorney General. Answer the question. What do you mean that's not the question? A high enough priority for you when you're threatening parents with 13 different federal crimes? I These aren't crimes of violence. You've testified today. You're focused on violence. That's not what your U.S. attorneys, they work for you. That's not what they're saying. You haven't seen it because it's not a high enough priority or what? A question of priority. No one has sent me that memo, so I haven't seen it. What do you mean no one has sent you the memo? You run the United States Department of Justice, do you not? There are 115,000 employees of the Department of Justice. Indeed, and you are in charge of every one of them. And, and this was a sufficiently important case that you issued a memo. You, over your signature, issued a memo involving the FBI and the Department of Justice in local school boards, local school districts. Your U.S. attorneys are now threatening prosecution with 13 different crimes, but it's not a high enough priority for you. It got lost in the mix. I'll send again. I've never seen that memo. It That's what concerns me, General Garland. Well, it was 
should concern all of us. I mean, how incompetent can you be? I mean, these memos are coming across your desk. How is it even possible, folks? How is it even possible? Why is it that every single time one of these governmental bureaucratic elites comes and sits down before Congress, every single time some paper was never sent to them, they never got into their email box, they never saw it. They never heard about it. Nobody told them about it. How come they always seem to disappear at just the right moment that they never saw it, never never put their eyes on it, never been handed to them? Why is that every single freaking time? Wasn't sent to me. I hope you will assure your constituents that what we are concerned about here is violence and threats of violence. That only leads That's me to best conclude, way. General That's Garland, all I can conclude from this is either that you're not in control of your own department or that more likely what I think to be the case is that you knew full well that this is exactly oh, yeah. the kind of thing that would happen. When you issued your memo, when you involved the Department of Justice and all of its resources, and the FBI and all of its resources in local school boards and local school districts, you knew that federal prosecutors would start collecting crimes that they could use against parents. You knew they would advise state and local officials that these are all of the ways parents might be prosecuted. You knew that that was the likely outcome. And that's exactly what's happened. He knew it. He absolutely knew it. We all know he knew it. Everybody knows he knew it. And we're talking about parents like Scott Smith, who's behind me over my shoulder. This is a father from Loudoun County, Virginia. Here he is at a school board meeting. He was for. Let me give you some background on this. This is the father who went to the school board meeting in Loudoun County, basically to say that his daughter was raped by a male who said he was transgender, was allowed to dress as a female and allowed to go into the bathroom. He raped his daughter. Then they hushed that up. They sent that kid packing because he's under the age of 18, still considered a minor. They sent him off to another school in Virginia School District where he committed the same act on another girl. So that's two. And they covered it up. They covered up, folks. And then when he tried to tell the school board and other people at a public meeting, which is his right to do, he's allowed to do as a parent. I would have been, as a, as a father, I mean, you're telling the school board that your daughter's been um, sexually assaulted and they got the police armed. Look at what they're doing to him over there. This is a citizen of the United States of America, a parent going to a school board meeting to basically say, hey, look, look what your policies did. They, they had an effect on my daughter. She was physically assaulted because of your stupid, idiotic, moronic, woke policies. Forcibly restrained, he was assaulted, he was arrested. Why? Because he went to an elected school board meeting. He's a voter, by the way. He went to an elected school board meeting to raise the fact that his daughter was assaulted, sexually assaulted, in a girl's restroom by a boy. This is what happened to him. Now, you testified last week before the House that you didn't know anything about this case. I find that extraordinary because the letter that you put so much weight on, the letter that's now been retracted, it cites this case. It cites Mr. Scott's case. Direct. There you go. I didn't know nothing about this happening, but just so it seemed that the memo that you wrote that you penned has this exact case on there, Merrick. Liar. There's a news article cited in the letter. It's discussed in the letter, but you testified you just couldn't remember it. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Do you think people like... Scott Smith, you think parents who show up to complain about their children being assaulted ought to be treated like this man right here? Parents who show up to complain about school boards are protected by the First Amendment. Do you think that they ought to be? Not the First Amendment, according to you. You're looking and probably listening and writing and thinking about a completely different First Amendment in like bizarro world, Merrick. Prosecuted in the different ways that your U.S. attorneys are identifying? If what they're doing is complaining about what the school board is doing, policies, curriculum, anything else that they want to, as long as they're not committing threats of violence, then they should not be prosecuted, and they can't be. Let me ask you about this. Several of my Democrat colleagues have today, just today in this hearing, multiple times have compared parents who show up at school board meetings, like Mr. Smith here, have compared them to criminal rioters. 
You think that's right? You think that a parent who shows up at a school board meeting who has a complaint, who wants to voice that complaint, and maybe she doesn't use exactly the right grammar, you think they're akin to criminal rioters? Do you agree with that? I do not, and I do not remember any senator here compare, making that comparison. Oh, really? These maybe you're just too old, Merrick, okay? Maybe you need to get a pair of hearing aids for crying out loud. Didn't hear a single person say this. Unbelievable. God, the lies these guys continue to foment, the verbal diarrhea that continues to be excreted through their esophagus and through their lips is unfreaking believable. These people are just like the folks who came here on January 6th and in, in, in the riot at the Capitol? I don't think it was, they were referring to the picture that you're showing there. No, of course. Well, I certainly would hope not. They were referring to parents who go to school board meetings. Mr. Smith is a parent who went to a school board meeting. I'll leave it at this, General Garland. You have weaponized the FBI and the Department of Justice. Your U.S. attorneys are now collecting and cataloging all the ways that they might prosecute parents like Mr. Smith because they want to be involved in their children's education, and they want to have a say in their elected officials. It's wrong. It is unprecedented, to my knowledge, in the history of this country. And I call on you to resign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I mean, folks, what more do you want to hear about? What more do you want to see? Senator Josh Hawley, he had the questions right down there. He had the memos in front of him. It's all in black and white. This guy was lying through his teeth, Merrick Garland. Never saw the memo, never got the memo, didn't know about a case, didn't know about what was happening in Montana, didn't think that this was basically against parents. It was just a simple memo that was just saying, you know what, if you commit an act of violence, you commit a threat or whatever, then yeah, we can go and prosecute you. <laughs> what about the 13 instances in which parents go on the internet? Oh, we can prosecute you for that. What happened to freedom? These guys are unbelievable. And, and, you know, but the problem that happens is that they get put in this hot seat, they get grilled, they get questioned, and there's no accountability for them. They're virtually immune. So it's nice that we have all these Senate hearings and everything and shed a little bit of light on that for that day, but we've got to continue to keep that light on and, and make these people realize that, you know what, you can't just, you know, skirt around the First Amendment. You can't just start making up memos to start putting people into jail for things that are thought, you know, you can't just be doing that. But unfortunately, that's what these people do. That's what the government elites do. Remember, rules for we and not for thee. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. Check out all our other videos on your favorite congressmen and senators out there putting our government bureaucratic elites in the hot seat. And remember, you've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I was your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Shake. And hit that subscribe button, not notification bell. Go ahead, like, share, and follow us. We'd really appreciate that. And I'll leave with my final thought. And that's when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.